Get your copy of Five Steps to Solo Travel at Amazon on May 8th, Mother's Day. If everyone buys it that day, the book will be at number one. Welcome to Dr. Mary Travel Best's Independent Travel Guide. This is an episode for women like you who need a little extra support traveling the world one woman at a time. The episode is sponsored by Sun Marketing Advertising Media. I'm Dr. Travel Best, and I've been traveling independently since 1972, and soon I will release a new guidebook on five steps to solo travel. Please share this podcast with your parents, loved ones, and your friends. In this episode, the FAQ is, Amy asked me a question, how can I create my trip? Today's destination is Guangzhou, China. Today's mistake is losing my sense of direction. And the travel advice is to keep your lip balm handy. So the FAQ, Amy asked me, how can I create my trip? And the answer, Amy, is you can create your own trip however you want it to be. What I would do is start out with writing out what you want to do. Put it on paper and you'll see it, imagine it, and then you can get going. Get a map, start looking for the destinations and things that get you excited. Talk to some friends who have been there and get some ideas on when the best time to travel would be for you. Then make plans, flights, sleeping arrangements, and transportation options. And be sure to follow the five steps for solo travel. Today's episode destination is Guangzhou, China. Guangzhou is north of Hong Kong, not too far, but it's in the southern part of China overall. I spent a week in the city of 15 million people, which used to be called Canton, like the name of the language of southern China, Cantonese. It's a bustling and busy industrial city for the most part. It was so modern, even more than most cities I know well. Most of my time was spent at the university teaching. I was a guest lecturer in China at Sun Yat-sen University, which is ranked about 159 worldwide among universities, with 23,000 graduate students, 85,000 total enrollment. So Sun Yat-sen University is a public research university founded in 1924 and named after Sun Yat-sen, a revolutionary and the founder of the Republic of China. Now, Guangzhou has a maritime heritage, stretched back 2,000 years or so, and its port is China's main transport and trading hub. It was also one of the starting points of the Old Silk Road, a trading route that stretched across Asia. Want to know more about Guangzhou? Here are a few attractions that I found by searching the city information. It's on the Pearl River, and has architecture such as Zaha Hadid's Guangzhou Opera House, known as the Double Pebble, a carved box-shaped Guangdong Museum, and the iconic Canton TV Tower skyscraper, resembling a thin hourglass. Also, the Chen Clan Ancestral Hall is a temple complex from 1894 that also houses the Guangdong Folk Arts Museum. So how did I get around the city by myself? I took the bus, I took the train, and I took the subway. And I did a lot of walking. The subways were easy to follow and brought me around the city quickly. I explored the city, got a hotel room, and afterwards, I took a high-speed train to Shanghai, which is an even larger city in the northern part of China. Seeing China by train is such an experience, and you may love it too. I was able to get to know what the changes were taking place were like in the countryside, as well as in the larger cities with this kind of travel. And now for my lessons learned, losing my sense of direction. One of the things that I am terrible at is my sense of spatial direction. I wish it was different, but reality is true. It's not good. I need to retrace my steps, my directions, and I get lost a lot. One of the best things is my mobile app for directions. 
Get the cure for a bad sense of direction. And don't be like me. And now for some travel advice. Keep your lip balm handy. Many of us get dry lips, and the best remedy is a stick that gives comfort, such as chapstick, Carmex, or other relief from chapped lips. Always apply balm before topping with gloss. The color from the gloss will adhere better to the balm's waxy texture. Gloss can dry out, and that dries out your lips. So always apply the balm before the gloss and get some hydration. Color is better. I want to bring meaning to your travels, so send me your travel tip or question. You can send it to my Facebook group or page or Instagram. You can also find me on Twitter, and maybe you'll see your tips in Five Steps to Solo Travel. What's on your travel bucket list? Tell the doctor and her team of women who travel the world seeking the very best. Dr. Travel Best, that is.